more. Hi there, my name is Redmar, I'm from the Netherlands, and in this video I'll be talking a bit about this project I'm undertaking. Around in about 2011 I encountered this image and, well, it was love at first sight. It turned out to be a Chinese officer's dress armor from the Ming Dynasty, so around about 14th to 17th century. And it is characterized by this here sort of three-pointed star pattern. It's called Shen Wen Jie, if you'll excuse my pronunciation. It translates as mountain pattern armor. And here's where it gets speculative, because there is no archaeological evidence that this type of armor ever existed. I mean, the shape, yes, but those scales, those stars, no one knows. No one knows. Often it is. It's not even called Shanwenjie, it's called Suozi. Same apologies before. Which is a word also used for chainmail. So, not even the name is certain. And. There are a lot of theories floating around on the internet as to what it actually is. Some say it's, it's an artistic representation of chainmail. It might be just. A pattern in cloth, though that does not explain the relief we see on uh, stonework statues. They're often described as metal, so it's probably metal. And how exactly they work, many theories are there. Many people have experimented, made test pieces such as this, or this, or this, this. Many, many, many different people have made many different test pieces, and that's exactly it. There are, they are test pieces. There are very few complete armor sets, and that's where I'm. I'll make it. Yes, make a difference. I'm gonna make a difference. <laughs> I'm going to make an entire suit of armor because the shape of armor. That, that is that is verifiable. That is, there are many paintings, statues, and other records showing that. Yes, that is what an officer's uniform looked in the Ming Dynasty. So the design of scales that I have chosen to use is one by Daniel Sloan. It is based on the description that the scales themselves are shaped like the Chinese character for a mountain. So. Uh, like this. <laughs> yes. Like this. And I have made a test piece for cardboard back in 2011. That worked. That worked pretty good. Worked pretty well. I've made a metal test piece. And I have by now even made a full uh, it is gonna be a shoulder or upper arm guard like this like this it's going to have this dragon hat attached to it like so it's gonna be great gonna be great so like this I will explain it all in more detail but what I have found so far is there seems to be a good reason there's no archaeological evidence for this it is not a very good armor. There are much more efficient ways of covering a person in metal. Uh, and, and, and they had those back in the Ming Dynasty. There are records of those. This material, it has some flex to it. Some flex to it and makes a lovely noise when it does. My microphone's up there. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Some flexibility, but not a lot. So percussive, percussive weapons would not be distributed. The, the force of percussive weapons would not be distributed terribly well. Against slashing weapons, sure, sure. If I have my little sword here, it it won't cut through there. No, it won't. Now, stabby stabby, or in fact, an arrow. That's where it gets. That's where it gets weird, because the, the, the very shape of the scale often guides the weapon towards 
the hole in between the scales. And that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Now a hole is not the end of the world. Case in point, chainmail. Chainmail is uh, nothing but holes and it works just fine. It is much more flexible though, so it does redirect force of a blow and there will also be an under, under armor under it, like a woolen or linen gambeson. And this armor of mine will also be lined with wool. Why wool? Because I have wool. I have no idea whether wool was the historically accurate way of building it. I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go along, man. Um, yeah, there are theories that it was only decorative, even. That the real armor would be a brigandine on the inside, but if you're gonna do that, why, why bother with this? It is also very labor-intensive. This doesn't want to be many hours. And I have access to modern equipment. It is a very inefficient shape. Those little hooks here, they take a lot of effort to fabricate. And you could do without, I reckon. I could shove one in here. Like so, and need this one right here. The, the density of the pattern will keep it in place. And it would be riveted. It would be riveted anyway, so it, it, it will perform just as well as the more complex ones. So I don't know if I should continue with the with the with the hook footed ones or not. I don't know. Uh it's not an efficient way of dealing with material either. There are places where it overlaps three times and then there are those holes in between the scales. It makes absolutely no sense to build an armor like this. So it was probably only done for bragging rights, showing off. And yeah, that, that that's that's what a dress armor is for, isn't it? As for especially for a officer or a general, a general wants to be that guy in shiny golden armor. That is also why I chose bras because that looks pretty shiny. So yeah, historically accurate. Who knows? But it will be a full set of armor. It will be really cool. So I, I I'll be releasing videos as I make them. As I finish parts of the uh, of, of, of the armor, and 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 uh, I'm just very excited, very happy to take you along on this journey, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.